I'm up here at Hook, Line, and Paddle today, and we're going to talk about what to look for when you're buying a used kayak. I'm up here at Hook, Line, and Paddle, and we're going to talk about buying a used kayak, and I've got the owner of the store standing right here next to me, Chris, and he has had to buy and sell used kayaks all his life. And so he's the absolute expert, and I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to him, and I think the first thing that he's got to talk about is the right length and width of a kayak. Where are we, Chris? Get behind that camera, get those old man germs away from me. Okay, I'm sorry. Social distancing, let me get away. Hey Steve, how you doing? So glad to have you back in the shop, six feet away from me. I prefer 10, but six is good enough. Um, so we're gonna talk about how to buy a used kayak. And I think first off, you need to ask yourself, what do you wanna do in kayak fishing? We see a lot of people kind of make their mistake of they bought a boat too long, they bought a boat, a boat too short, they wanted to stand up, but they picked a the kayak they couldn't stand up in. So what you need to ask yourself first before going out to look for a good used kayak is how do you want to fish that kayak? Do you want something that you can stand up in, pull through the shallows, search for redfish? Do you want something you can take offshore through the surf zone or out through an inlet? you know, for some bigger prey in the ocean? Um, do you want one that'll do both? Um, are you just happy with something very, very simple, like a very simple 12 foot standard kind of traditional sit on top kayak? Um, those are the, so that's kind of the first question you have to ask yourself because it all varies. Uh, what I'm gonna show you today in, in kind of a rundown on a you sit on top for fishing is a native Slayer 14.5. When we, we look at these kayaks when they come in, it's kind of about a stern process. We want to think about, you know, your handles, the hatches, or the foot pegs there. Just kind of overall general condition of the kayak. Um, and if you're going to find something on Craigslist or something like that, hopefully this is going to steer you to what to look for, what might be a red flag. So we can start now. We'll start the bow of the kayak. So one thing you want to consider and really take, take into consideration, understand, I should say, consideration is you don't want to buy anything too short. 12 is kind of the magic number, you know, 10 foot or less, um, they're not going to track well, they're not as stable, they're not going to carry as much gear, you're really going to fight that boat, even on a nice day, you're going to be constantly, you know, doing corrective strokes. Um, there's a few manufacturers on the market, um, Wilderness Systems is doing a, doing a good job with it, Native's doing a great job with it, they're doing an 11 and a half foot, kind of that, kind of tweener, but they're giving it a nice extended keel, that's going to cure those issues. So starting at the bow, you know, is the handle in good condition? It is. The, the foam's still on. Some have foam, some don't. This is an aluminum handle that Native does. It's in great condition. Coming back down, this boat, um, most sit on tops will have a, some form of front hatch. This one's intact. It's installed. The bungee's in good condition. It does lift up. There is storage inside of it. The scupper plugs are in place. Let me pull one out for you. There's two in here, so we know this is good. The battery box is intact, has all its hardware. Look inside the kayak, the foot pegs are both here. They both work well. You know, we'll probably give this a quick little rinse down, a little bit of sand, but they do function. They do lock in position. Um, this kayak did have foam inside the boat that's for standing, for comfort and traction. It's all present. Uh, the newer versions of it came with a tool carry carry bag. It's here. Coming back towards the cock, you know, where you're going to be sitting at. The side briefcase handles are intact. The foam's on them. The track looks well. There's no obvious wear. There's no, not a ton of scratches on it. These are all aluminum, so rust really isn't an issue. The big reason why people choose Native is for their incredible, comfortable seat sets. Our natural cat scan. You see, look, we are touchdown. That's a comfortable seat system. So we take a look at the seat. It's designed to bungee in so it can't fall out. It has a low and a high position. The hooks are here for the bungee in the front and we'll get a shot here as we move through the boat where they connect in the back. They're, they're present. The seat's in good shape. The other thing we want to look at is uh, where, the, where, the, where, where the back breast straps attach. Are they, are they in good shape? Are they functioning? Are they doing what they're supposed to do? And they are. The webbing straps in good shape. All the tri glides look good on both sides. So again, you have another one here to look for, and here. 
They put rubber caps because it's a hollow aluminum tube. We have it on all four sides. So overall general condition, this is used so there's a little bit of sun fading on the seat. That's not a huge concern to me. I'm more concerned about the hardware and the actual condition of the fabric. And this looks fantastic. I mean, given there's gonna be some sun fading because it's been outside. Okay. All right, so we've got through the seat area and in, and in the, the Slayer 14.5, they gave you two places to have, to store tackle boxes. They had retaining clips for them. They are present on each side and working. So that's, you know, there, it's one less thing we gotta fix. Um, these two tabs back here, where I said we'd see in the future, where the back of the seat clips into to keep it in, we're good to go. Came with two recessed rod tubes. All the rivets are in place, so nothing's popped out. And you can still see the foam gasketing. It's in good condition. It's not flaking off. So you know that rubber seal's still really good. It does have a stern hatch. It's a nice fit to it. Um, it does have its little grab bucket. And I have a lot of customers say, man, that hatch is kind of tight and hard to get off. You want a hard, you want a hatch to be tight and hard to get off. You're, you're in the water. This is this would be a way to get water in the kayak if something happens. So it's got good retention. It clips on. It's in good shape. So moving back to the tank well, the deck bungee back here is in good condition. The aluminum tracks are in good condition. No big scratches. No big gouges. All the tabs are here for your adjustments. They're in place. Scupper holes look good. You know all the storage back here is looking really good. So in a tank well, is it all marred up and scratched and gunky and junky? No, this is a pretty simple, this is very obvious. You, you'll know if something's wrong. Um, and then again, there's a front handle, there's a stern handle. So that handle's here, it's in good shape. The rubber's not flaking off. This boat does have a drain plug. The drain plug is present and it, it's a nice tight fit. So we know that's not gonna be a leak point on the kayak. It takes a little bit of effort to get it screwed back in. So that's a good sign. This model comes with their tag along wheel. So of course it's a used boat, so it's a little rough. It's been drugged across parking lots. It's in good working condition. The bracket for it's in good condition. The screws are in it, we're all set. You could add a rudder to this. Um, when they first came out, that screw's still in there. So we know all the parts are here now. So we've kind of gone through the top deck of a kayak. It's going to be very obvious there's kind of any kind of issues. You're going to see where screws are missing. You're going to see where bungee's been broken or bungee should be. Um, but I want to move around the side of the kayak and, and put it on the side and let's talk about the hull. This is going to be the part of the kayak that's going to take the most abuse. Up and down the boat ramp, going over oyster beds, going over rocks. So we want to look for any, there's going to be scratches on every used kayak, you know. That's obvious. Um, and we want to look for the places we're obviously going to find them. It's going to be a little, little rough up in the back, you know, from, from going up the ramp or, or that's the first thing you're going to hit. My big concern is coming back through the hull, you know, you know, there's a little bit, it's a little rough, but it's not bad. You'll see where it's scraped and rubbed a little bit. This little area right here is probably from going in and out of the back of a pickup truck. Again, not a huge deal. This is a good time to get a good look inside your scuppers. If there's any kind of visible cracks, that's going to be a leak in the boat. Um, you know, native has huge scupper holes, so it's very, they're very easy to inspect. Stick your finger and look for any rough spots. But coming down through this kayak, there is not anything that would make me go, uh-oh, that's kind of bad. Um, even back here in the stern, the stern's in great condition. That's really added on by a tag along wheel. This is usually going to grab before the plastic of the hull. So I can tell most of these rub marks are from loading and unloading. Um, or you know, sliding a second kayak against it if they're you know, in the back of a pickup truck. So overall, the bottom of this hull is in great condition. You'll see some kayaks that have you know, curly Q peel back of plastic. Again, it's not a big deal. These, these boats are durable, they're thick enough that you can have some decent gouges without really raising a lot of, a lot of, a lot of attention. What I would really be concerned about in the used kayak when inspecting the hull is just checking the scuppers. Um, it's a place that can get a crack in it and it's kind of a place most people don't think to look if they have water coming in their kayak. It seems to be the last place someone thinks to look. It's usually the first place you should look. But again, these are all in great condition. This boat really doesn't look like it's hardly been used by the customer that brought it into us. So overall, I mean, I would be, I would be happy with a kayak like this. I mean, most of my boats are in worse condition than this is, and I still fish them every day. So, um, but again, going out in the used market, you know, these are some of the things you should look for before you purchase a kayak. <laughs> That's a lot of stuff to check. Thanks a lot, Chris. And 
I'm sure that what we just went through is going to save someone from buying a kayak that they would end up having to just discard after a season. Thanks a lot. Thanks, Steve. And I'll stay away from it. Yeah, six feet, six <laughs> feet. That's why this boat's 14 and a half. Okay. If you guys have any comments or did we miss anything, throw it down below. Thanks.